Now, the state of the Catholic Church. Tonight, Eyewitness News is going in-depth on the challenges facing the Diocese of Providence. With the dwindling number of priests, local churches continue to make do with less. And I sat down with Bishop Thomas Tobin, who tells me the growing number of retired priests is causing a ripple effect in the church's ministry. And there's no rainbow in sight, with only two men being ordained later this month. It's a story you'll see only on Eyewitness News. It's been eight months since I traveled with more than 400 Rhode Islanders to Philadelphia to witness Pope Francis in America. I think there is a lot of, of excitement. <laughs> and, and I think the people who were part of the uh, Holy Father's visit to the United States, especially those who were uh, present in, in person, I think that excitement is something that will stay with them for the rest of their lives. Almost a year later, serious challenges continue to face the Catholic Church in Rhode Island. In the last seven years, including this year, we've lost 54 priests um, from active ministry in this diocese, and, and that's huge. The bishop says only 15 were ordained during that time period, leaving a net loss of 39 priests. So next year, it gets even worse for you. I, I know you know the numbers. July of 2017, you have 18 men that are 70 and over retirement age. What would happen if they all decided to turn in their retirement papers? Well, if they all decided to retire at once, our serious problem would become even more difficult. The diocese has 143 parishes, 40 schools, and more than 30 ministries and Catholic social services. Is it a priest shortage or a church surplus? Both. That's a good way of putting it, I suppose. We have fewer and fewer priests. And we have uh, probably more churches and, and parishes than we need. The changing demographics have hit many communities hard, especially West Warwick, where a commission is underway to study the viability of its eight parishes. Starting this July in Woonsocket, four more parishes, Sacred Heart and Holy Family, St. Charles and All Saints, will be ministered by two priests, bringing the total to 20 priests serving 43 parishes in the diocese. As of right now, Bishop Tobin says a decision needs to be made concerning Our Lady of Mount Carmel on Federal Hill. Well, the, the, church, the church building itself is closed. Um, on paper, there's still a parish community there. And at some point, we'll have to bring that to a, a, a closure, to a conclusion. What happens to the property after that? Uh, thus far, I have no idea. Tobin says Pope Francis's idea of examining female deacons in the church is infeasible right now under holy orders. While a new class of male deacons is about to get underway in September, I asked him if married men being ordained is a possibility. In theory, is it possible? Of course, because we already have some married priests. Do I see it coming in the immediate future in a way that will be helpful to us? No. Bishop also tells me the shortage is causing difficulties with hospital and school ministry. Some schools will be without a chaplain next year. Now, coming up, Bishop Tobin talks about legislative grants and what would happen if the church was asked to pay property taxes. That's tonight on Eyewitness News at 6. Now, the state of the Catholic Church. On Eyewitness News Live at 5, we told you about the rapidly declining number of priests in the diocese. Almost two dozen are eligible to retire next year, and only two are being ordained this month. In an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with Bishop Thomas Tobin, I also asked him about how the church is reaching out to divorced and remarried Catholics, legislative grants, and what would happen if city and state officials approached the diocese about taxing church property. It's a story you'll see only on Eyewitness News. Seems like every couple of weeks he comes out with something that's kind of a challenge. Every couple of weeks or every couple of days, perhaps. <laughs> it, it seems to be a pretty uh, regular feature of this pope, but that's terrific. Bishop Thomas Tobin on living up to the challenges of Pope Francis. He's certainly been very insistent on the church being a church of the poor and accompanying people in their own journey of faith and responding to all the needs they have. A priority helping to heal divorced and remarried Catholics. As Eyewitness News first reported last week, the $500 fee, once charged for a formal marriage annulment procedure, will be eliminated on July 1st. Now, the Holy Father has asked us to try to simplify the annulment process, and we, like all the dioceses in the world, I suppose, are in the process of doing that. 
While Bishop Tobin has been a supporter of simplifying the process, he says it won't happen overnight. Another topic, taxing the nonprofits. Providence officials are once again asking the General Assembly to approve a bill that would allow municipalities to charge nonprofit institutions up to 50% of what their tax bill would be if they weren't tax exempt in order to cover the cost of police, fire, and rescue services. First of all, I, I th we would resist that because the contributions we make to our community, to society, are enormous. And if we had to start paying taxes, as for-profits do, that would harm our ability to provide these services uh, for education, our Catholic schools, homeless shelters, uh, soup kitchens, food pantries, uh, heating assistance. All of the ministries we have, all the programs we have, would be um, affected in a very detrimental way if we have had to start paying taxes. Another controversial topic, legislative grants. In addition to doling out more than $11 million in community service grants last year, $2.2 million was distributed in so-called legislative grants. The diocese received over $136,000. Bishop Tobin says he has no problem with the concept because the money is helping the needy. We get money from the government, from state grants, for example. We don't sit on that. We don't keep it. We use it to provide services. So I think that's, that's legitimate, and I think sometimes nonprofits can do uh, things and provide services far more effectively than a larger government can do. Now, we reached out to Mayor Loris' office, and they tell Eyewitness News houses of worship have not been part of that conversation about taxing nonprofits.